This all looks so tranquil. This is San Francisco Bay, but that's just a name. It is really an estuary, a living, constantly changing, nutritionally rich nursery for babies. Baby salmon, baby crabs. Hundreds of species depend on this place to be healthy, or they die. An estuary is part salt water and part fresh water. Fresh water from rivers far away mixed with the salt water coming in from the Pacific Ocean, creating a nutrient rich environment that the babies must have to start their lives. This place is the biggest and most important estuary on the west coast of both North and South America. This place is under siege. The rivers that used to flow naturally into this body of water and the Sacramento Delta have been dammed and diverted for decades, engineered to accommodate an expanding population and the demands of agriculture to irrigate crops. The heavy Sacramento River winter runoffs meet the San Joaquin, form a delta, and flow to the sea. The plan of the Central Valley Project was to capture Sacramento Valley surplus water and drive it upward, up into the parched San Joaquin Valley. It all works pretty well when nature blesses us with wet years and good snowfall in the mountains. Today we're up here at Phillips Station again for the April 30th snow survey. Well, here at the Phillips Snow Course, we measured about 11 inches of snow depth, 5.7 inches of snow water content. But in dry years, our complex system becomes severely stressed. There are several government agencies involved with water, wildlife, and people. Both federal and state agencies play out their roles, sometimes for good, other times with disastrous results. You're looking at dead salmon on the Klamath River in 2002. It was a year of drought, and desperate, angry growers demanded that more Klamath water be diverted for their irrigation needs. The Bush administration relented, relaxing protections in place to keep the salmon run healthy. The river's water was sent to thirsty crops. More than 30,000 salmon died as a result. On their way back from the ocean, on their trip to return to their natal streams to mate, they encountered a river with not enough water and water that was too warm for them to survive. Which brings us back to today and the health of this magnificent nursery for baby fish. A couple of years ago, the government closed the salmon fishery to everyone. Fish on! Recreational fishermen could suddenly no longer go on salmon fishing trips with their family. Commercial fishermen could no longer make a living catching salmon. Whole communities, businesses that depended on salmon fishing, families all became victims victims of diminishing salmon populations. What caused the salmon to decline? It's the job of the National Marine Fisheries Service, part of NOAA, to monitor the health of our oceans and the creatures who depend on them. In 2004, a team of government scientists looked at the Pacific salmon populations and determined that they were at risk. They reported that too much fresh water from rivers was being diverted and going to agriculture instead of the Delta and the San Francisco estuary. That finding should have resulted in increased water for the estuary. But a NOAA biologist changed the scientific biological opinion after questions arose from an interagency examination of the science. Whether or not the revised scientific conclusion was based on sound science or political pressure, the result was suddenly that salmon were not in jeopardy and therefore more water could be sent to agriculture instead of being used to keep the estuary healthy. The practical result was a major collapse of the salmon population. The guy that worked for National Marine Fisheries Service there he found exaggerations in that first report. That first report was leaked to a newspaper. 
uh, that said there would be jeopardy to the winter run salmon if they went forward with this. But he found these so-called exaggerations and issued a new one that said there would not be any jeopardy. And then three years later, we've got no fall run salmon and we've got the Delta smelt down to near extinction. Barack, Barack Hussein Obama do solemnly swear. In 2009, the new Obama administration took another look at the problem and concluded that salmon continued to be in jeopardy and in danger of becoming extinct. California's $2 billion wild salmon industry is getting some long-awaited help from the federal government. It comes in the form of a biological opinion study. There was one key word the salmon industry wanted to see today, one key word that would change an attitude, jeopardy. They got it. It's a legally meaningful word, means it will, it jeopardizes the species with extinction. They concluded that to improve their chances of survival, the no fishing ban would remain in force, and more fresh water needed to reach the delta and the bay, meaning less for Central Valley farmers. Big agriculture went ballistic. Today, the Obama administration announced a new biological opinion that will end water delivery. We intend to file another lawsuit. Fishermen watched from land because they were still not allowed to fish for salmon, wondering why agriculture still does not understand that fish need water too. It's already a gauntlet as it is to get from the hatchery to the ocean, whether it be from temperatures or whether it be from chemicals or runoffs from the farms. Uh, it, it's really difficult for a baby fish to make it all the way to the Golden Gate. That would be a big help to have some more flows. When those people signed their contracts, they knew there would be years that they would not be able to get their allocation of water. Yet they're the first ones to come to the plate and start crying about how they need water and how we're starving out this, that, and the other thing. Well, they knew it coming in. But even though the science and the law are on the side of benefiting the fish, politics comes right back into the picture. As we dedicate this building home to three different hospitals, and the Stewart and Linda Resnick Neuropsychiatric Hospital at UCLA. Take a, just a few moments to imagine the people who trans. This is Stuart Resnick, a millionaire many times over who lives in Beverly Hills. His philanthropy gifts for good causes have benefited many. He owns Roll International. One of the many divisions of Roll is Paramount Farms in the southern end of the San Joaquin Valley. A recent report conducted by the Center for Investigative Reporting documents Mr. Resnick's business holdings and a long list of generous contributions to politicians and political action committees. Among the many office holders who have received significant campaign contributions, according to the Center's report, is California Senator Dianne Feinstein. Apparently, the Senator and Mr. Resnick are good friends, even attending a recent New Year's Eve party at the Resnick's Aspen home where, according to the New York Observer, they wore silly hats and had lots of streamers. What is not so silly, though, is a letter that Mr. Resnick sent to Senator Feinstein. In it, he complained about the sloppy science that was at the heart of reduced water deliveries to West Side growers. He urged the senator to become involved in the issue. One week later, the senator forwarded the Resnick letter to two cabinet secretaries and urged the Obama administration to spend nearly a million dollars to re-examine the science behind the Delta Environmental Protection Plan. And that re-examination is going to happen. No one knows what the result will be, but there is a clear perception that big money political gifts from big agriculture seems to result in big benefits. I mean, what do we see here? We see the National Marine Fisheries Service going back and forth and back and forth on this issue, depending on how much political pressure is being applied. You know, and now here it comes again. We think we, it's, it just never stops. Meanwhile, recreational and commercial salmon fishermen are no closer to being allowed to fish for salmon. And depending on the outcome of yet another scientific look at the problem in the Delta, salmon may or may not be on the way to recovery or extinction.
and on and on and on it goes. Salmon water, now. <laughs>